Alright, uh, today we're going to be covering, um, starting a new game with, uh, Space Pirates and Zombies. And, uh, going over some, uh, basics of the game itself while we go through Chapter 1. And, um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a system, uh, I might as well just do 300 stars because we're we'll playing this a lot. Um, one good thing: uh, the more stars you have in your system, um, I'll show as an example. When you do less stars, as you can see, there's fewer locations, which will make a quicker game. Um, but each level or each system to the next is going to be a larger jump in difficulty. Um, so it can be good to have something somewhere in the middle uh, if you want a decently paced game. And then if you like the epic style, you can go for 300 stars. I think we're going to go actually closer to 240 or so. That seems like a decent map for us. It'll take some time to load whatever you do a new game, but um, this is really the only significant loading time there is in the game whatsoever. Uh, transferring between each system and missions and stuff is pretty quick, which is nice. This is a pretty fun game. I've been playing it since uh, beta came out. Definitely uh, one that I would recommend. Um, if you've ever played a game called Escape Velocity, uh, this is like a new version of that game, plus much better with, uh, yeah, way more fun actually than EV. But it definitely um, reminds me a lot about that game. Space is a vast and desolate frontier, covering a seemingly infinite distance. Even the speed of light is dwarfed by the unimaginable scale of our galaxy. It took nearly 250 years to bridge the void between Earth and its closest neighboring star. Mankind had mastered the folding of space-time, but relied on the use of warp gates. This is kind of Massive drone ships journeyed the game. through deep space for centuries, deploying pairs of warp gates which allowed instantaneous travel between connections. Walkgate travel had not become commonplace until the discovery of a stable element, number 126. This element contained bizarre transmutable properties, allowing it to be reconfigured into different forms of matter. This made it the most valuable and sought-after commodity in the universe. Mankind quickly became completely dependent on element 126, which the first miners named Rez. Due to the increasing demand for Rez, the Walkgate network became privatized. Anyone with ample funding was able to deploy new and unregistered warp gates. Like a new gold rush, convoys of miners traversed the expanding warp network looking for res deposits. This drove them closer and closer to the galactic core, where res deposits became richer and richer. The growing number of isolated colonies became unmanageable. As the unique ecologies of each discovered planet intermixed through trade, potential pandemics became a concern. The United Terran Alliance was formed to control interplanetary contamination. They moved to heavily restrict gate access. Military blockades began to screen all trade ships traveling between gates, attacking any unregistered ships that attempted to use them. For a time, the UTA was able to maintain control, but they soon crumbled under the weight of rapid expansionism and bureaucracy. Unable to manage their fleets and borders, the military hierarchy collapsed. Without central leadership, the UTA fleets dissolved into a series of isolated subcells that rarely communicated or traveled beyond local space. Each military subcell now struggles to control their systems by whatever laws they see fit to implement. Despite the enforced isolation, rogues continue the gold rush while refugees amass hidden away from the UTA's eye. They survive within the vast junk fields of an abandoned Earth. 
There they build a massive flagship named the Clockwork. With it, they intend to travel to the galactic core in search of a legendary mother load of rares. Alright, so that kind of sets up the story for us. And uh, also kind of explains the three factions in the game. Which is... Uh, the civilians, the UTA, and the pirates, which is us. Um, there's actually the fourth, which is the zombies, but that um, gets covered later. As you can see, we've had a little bit of a disaster. Alright, so this kind of like gives you an idea of three characters who kind of talk to you through these chat windows. Alright, um, so initially, um, this is the hangar screen, this is where we build all of our ships. Um, at first we're going to only have access to one tiny hangar, but later on we'll get access to more hangars and larger ones to build larger ships with. Um, to start off, we're going to have the short bus, which is the only design. Um, as you can see, these other designs are red and they're locked. Uh, we do not have them yet, so this is the only ship we can build. And um, each hard point on the ship can contain different modules. As you see, this short bus has um, one kind of gun point, which you can have the mining laser on. And then it has two utility points for a tractor beam and a scanner. And those scanners are good for uh, showing cloaked uh, items, which we'll get to later. But for now, we're just going to build the default uh, variant. You can zoom out with the middle mouse key. Alright, controls are pretty simple. WASD um, explains down below. Uh, going side to side. And always keep in mind that you're traveling in the direction that you're pointing when you go forward. So when you move the mouse without pressing any other keys or changing my uh, what I'm doing, it just kind of turns that way. And same with the other keys. I'm moving sideways now, I turn around. And uh, it's important to get used to that control scheme. Um, it's something that personally I took a little while to get used to. Um, and <laughs> before that was running into a lot of enemy fire and it's good to know how to dodge stuff because um, that's how you really keep yourself alive in this game and this is kind of explaining a um, little more about the game uh, with these little indicators on the sides of the screen showing where our objectives are and whatnot so we collect this little piece of uh, equipment and then we have to return now to that mothership to drop it off and whenever you return to the mothership, anything that's in your cargo will uh, fall out and be collected. And same with the warp beacons we'll see later. Alright. So these guys are kind of at each other's throat and talking about, um, now we need to go find another piece. And this brings us to the next part of the screen, which is the system map. <coughs> Travel between uh, different planets in the solar system through this screen. Basically, you are here, that's where we currently are. And there's always one planet that serves as your home base where your mothership just kind of chills and nothing really goes on other than that. Um, 